Yes, guys, the next set of NDAs that we'll be discussing is about NDAs 12. NDAs 12 is a direct comparable standard to AS 22, which also deals with accounting for taxes on income. While NDAs 12 talks about income tax. Now, apart from the fact that both the standards will deal with a similar concept of accounting for taxes in the form of current tax and deferred tax, nothing else in the standards are similar. The reason is your AS22 earlier under IGAP or your Indian GAP was basically following an income approach, which is income approach basically means the net profit as per your PNL has certain adjustments before you get into taxable income as per income tax. The difference between both of them is explained in the form of India's 12 and what is the accounting effect of it. But when we come to the concept of India's 12, Instead of AS22, India S12 talks about balance sheet approach where they compare two figures that is called as carrying value in your financial statements compared with the tax base, which is a calculation as per India S12. So significantly, the basis of calculation itself has changed. Therefore, you need to understand that apart from the fact that they are dealing with the same concept of income tax, they have a significantly different approaches towards computation of deferred tax as well as current tax clear now to begin with this standard first of all what is the significance of this standard remember your accounting income accounting income is nothing but your net profit as per p and l is not equal to your taxable income your taxable income is a computation as per your pgbp chapter right what do you say Net profit as per PNL minus depreciation debited as per PNL plus sorry plus depreciation debited to PNL minus depreciation under section 32 of Income Tax Act. Certain expenditure debited to PNL not supposed to be deducted for tax purposes. Certain incomes credited to PNL not considered for tax purposes. So many adjustments were done before we arrived at taxable income as per PGBP chapter. So therefore, I can come to a conclusion that your accounting income is significantly different from taxable income. Since your accounting income is different from taxable income, your tax on accounting income is also not equal to your tax on account, uh, taxable income. Your tax on accounting income is called as tax expense. Your tax on accounting income is called as tax expense. Your tax on taxable income, which is your obligation to pay tax, is called as current tax. Current tax is the amount of tax which we pay to the department or which we pay during a particular financial year. Clear? So that means there is a difference between the tax expense and current tax. The difference between both accounting income, sorry, uh, tax expense and current tax is given as deferred tax. So deferred tax is a difference between current tax and tax expense. In simple sense, he gives a formula like this. Tax expense is equal to current tax plus or minus deferred tax. If your current tax is greater than your tax expense, then it should be minus deferred tax. A minus figure signifies a current deferred tax asset. If your current tax is less than tax expense, then tax expense is equal to current tax plus deferred tax. Whenever I have a plus deferred tax, it is always a deferred tax liability. Clear? So this is where the concept of deferred tax and current tax emerge. Tax levy, uh, the, the standard deals with taxes on income. Such taxes on income could either be levied in India or could be levied outside India. Taxable income is not equal to accounting income. Your tax on taxable income is also not equal to tax on accounting income. So current tax is not equal to tax expense. Tax expense is credit is debited to PNL, while current tax is your provision for tax which is paid to the department. So I can give a formula as current, ta uh, current tax expense is equal to current tax plus or minus deferred tax. Whenever it is a plus symbol, it signifies deferred tax liability and whenever it is a minus symbol, it signifies deferred taxes. 
this is your underlying principle of why the standard emerges underlying principle from here we'll start discussing what is current tax what is deferred tax but understand that this underlying principle is the crux of the standard why does this standard even is required is because of this particular slide which i played right now clear what is current tax current tax is a tax payable or receivable in respect of taxable income or tax losses during a particular reporting period so current tax is something which is derived as per the prevailing tax laws so in india the prevailing tax law is income tax act 1961 according to income tax 1961 whatever is the tax payable or a tax refund in respect of taxable income that is nothing but your tax and taxable profits or tax losses during a period is called as current tax remember current tax is always measured as per prevailing tax laws in india the prevailing tax law is india income tax act 1961 so according to income tax 1961 any tax payable or receivable in respect of taxable income and losses during the period should be considered as current tax clear a current tax can be reported either as an asset or a liability depending upon the tax paid and tax payable if the amount payable under the as per the department or as per your income tax act is less than the amount of tax already paid in the form of advance tax or tds you report it as an asset if your amount of advance tax or tds is less than the amount of amount payable as per income tax act you report it as a liability so current tax can either be reported as an asset or can be reported as a liability so generally we have an asset uh, the this current tax reported in the form of provision for tax provision for tax is a current tax item it is a tax payable or receivable on taxable income and tax losses computed as per prevailing tax laws clear i measure current tax which is current tax asset or a liability based on tax expected to be recovered from the department or tax expected to be paid to the tax authorities using a tax rate which is enacted or substantively enacted on reporting date what do you mean by tax rates which are enacted or substantively enacted guys let's say for example the finance uh, commission or the finance ministry has given me a certif uh, a particular has called upon a particular press conference and they said the current tax is being reduced from 30% to 22% this is what happened earlier right to 25% let's say 5% cut in current tax in such cases let's say it happened in march but as on 31st march the law is not yet enacted for then in such cases since the announcement is already made though the tax rate is not enacted i can say that it is substantively enacted because it was already declared in the press conference it is only the government order which was pending so these are future tax rates which are virtually certain to apply if not today i will get the zero tomorrow but they are virtually certain to apply since the highest the appropriate authority of the government has already declared on cutting the tax rate so therefore your current tax should always be measured using tax rates which are enacted or substantively enacted on a reporting date how do i present this concept of current tax current tax should be presented in the statement of pnl as well as in balance sheet in the statement of pnl i'll have to report tax expense as a combination of current tax and deferred tax this is what we have seen here the tax expense is debited to pnl what is tax expense current tax plus or minus deferred tax so the current tax should be prepared, should be presented on in the face of pnl or for the impact of all the items which are debited or credited in the pnl however certain items which are presented in the oci or certain items which are presented in statement of changes in equity i will recognize current tax within oci or within other equity clear current tax asset and liability 
should be presented under current assets and current liabilities based on their finan uh, based on their nature and should always be non-financial in nature they are not financial assets and financial liability they should always be presented as non-financial assets and non-financial liabilities clear so i'm saying for all the items which are debited and credited in pnl the amount of current tax should be presented in the statement of pnl for certain items which are not recognized in pnl but are recognized in oci then i will recognize the current tax of on each item of oci independently for certain effect which is given in statement of changes in equity directly not reported in either pnl or oci current tax also should be reported only in other equity clear now comes the concept of deferred tax so remember guys we don't have significant discussion on current tax if you observe we only said current tax is tax payable as per the prevailing statute we just said that there is current tax asset or current tax liability depending upon whether the tax payable is greater or less than the tax already paid in the form of advanced tax or tds and we said we measure it based on either tax rates which are applied or substantively applied on reporting date that's all we discussed why are we not discussing further on current tax we are not discussing any further on current tax because determination of current tax is based on the prevailing statute prevailing statute income tax act 1961 is voluminous enough to decide how to calculate current tax india s12 need not tell you how to calculate current tax india s12 will just say calculate current tax as per prevailing statute prevailing income tax act 1961 it doesn't have to specify each and every provision of current income tax act 1961 all over again that is the reason why our discussion on current tax is only limited to understanding what is current tax and how do i measure current tax that is sufficient for us we don't have any further discussion on current tax because current tax is explained as per your income tax act 1961 clear then comes the concept of what is deferred tax Yes, guys. So let's come to the concept of deferred tax because this uh, is. Alright, sir. Please unmute yourself. Yeah. One second. Yes, guys. So now we come to the concept of deferred tax. What is deferred tax, and what is the significance of this concept? Remember, just like we said, current tax, current tax is determined as per the prevailing provisions of Income Tax Act 1961. I cannot leave deferred tax just like that. because deferred tax has to be defined under india s12 because deferred tax is not as per any other statute deferred tax is to be considered or calculated as per india s12 itself so we will have to go with the stepwise approach of determining deferred tax first of all what is deferred tax deferred tax is a future tax consequence i'm saying deferred tax is a future tax consequence for example let's say there's a provision for bonus to employees which was provided if the payment of bonus is not made within the current reporting period before the due date of filing your returns under 13391 then such amount of provision for bonus is not allowed as deduction but what can happen it can give rise to a future deduction to bonus whenever it is paid that means my future amount of tax payable will reduce 
this is called as future tax consequence a scientific research expenditure uh, an asset acquired for scientific research can be completely 100% depreciated in the same year as per section 35 of your income tax act but similar deduction is not available as far as your accounting approach is concerned according to our accounting approach we will continue to depreciate the asset uh, uh, on a straight line basis or a wdv basis let's say straight line basis so what happened your entire amount of deduction for tax payment has been allowed in the same year in which you purchase the asset in future no additional depreciation is allowed on that asset but as far as your accounting approach is concerned you keep on charging depreciation so what will happen your accounting income will be less than the amount of taxable income therefore you will pay a greater tax or higher tax in the future therefore this is called as future tax consequence a future tax consequence can either result in a higher tax liability or a reduction in tax liability it arises due to recovery of the carrying value of the asset or settlement of a liability in future i'm saying the future tax consequence arises either due to recovery of carrying value of an asset or settlement of a, of a liability in future such future tax consequence can either increase the tax liability or can reduce the tax liability any increase in tax liability will be recognized as a deferred tax asset sorry that should be recognized as a deferred tax liability guys i'm sorry for that guys whenever there is an additional liability in future which will result in a higher tax payment it should be recognized as a deferred tax liability i think i wrote it exactly reverse please try to rectify that a future tax consequence resulting in a higher tax liability in future will result in deferred tax liability whenever there is a future tax consequence of savings in tax or a reduction of tax liability then it is a benefit to the enterprise such benefit will be recognized as deferred tax asset clear increase in future tax liability is deferred tax liability decrease in future tax liability is deferred tax asset this is an in short the concept of deferred tax how do i identify this deferred tax my determination of deferred tax involves eight different steps first to identify the carrying value of assets and liabilities second to calculate the tax base of these items of assets and liabilities whatever assets and liabilities carrying value you identified in step 1 i will calculate their corresponding tax base think about a bare excel sheet okay first column carrying value of assets and liabilities that is the book value as it appears in your balance sheet second column is tax base we identify the tax base of every corresponding item of asset and liability the difference between 1 and 2 the difference between the carrying value and the tax base which we calculated in step 1 and step 2 is called as temporary difference is called as temporary difference as 22 language is timing difference you don't use the word timing difference here we use the word temporary difference step 4 we classify the temporary differences we call this temporary differences as taxable temporary differences or deductible temporary differences in step 4 Finally, step 5, we measure the amount of deferred tax. Your measurement of deferred tax should be determined based on a tax rate. So, your step 6 is your tax rate. Then you come into recognition and presentation of deferred tax in your financial statements. I'll repeat. First, start with identifying the carrying values. Corresponding to these carrying values, I have to identify tax base. Comparing 1 and 2, I will get temporary differences. These temporary differences should be classified. Then you determine a tax rate and try to measure what is the amount of deferred tax. After you determine the amount of tax rate and deferred tax, recognize the deferred taxes asset or liability and present the deferred tax asset or liability in your financial statements. This is my stepwise approach as far as your determination of deferred tax is concerned. Clear? Let's try to break down each step and understand. First step, I will not explain any further because first step is only about carrying value of assets and liabilities, which is nothing but your book values. 
after depreciation, after impairment, whatever value of asset and liability is appearing in the balance sheet, the same value will be considered as step one, carrying value of asset and liability. Step two onwards, we will have to take up the discussion. What is computation of tax base? My computation of tax base can be broken down into three parts. Tax base of assets, tax base of liabilities. For all those assets and liabilities where under step one you identified carrying value, we have to find out their corresponding tax base of assets and liabilities. But there are also tax base of items for, where, for which there is no carrying value in the balance sheet. There is no carrying value in the balance sheet, but there is a tax base for these items. So this third one is a very peculiar nature, very peculiar in nature because that item is not there in the balance sheet only. When you presented your balance sheets of assets and liabilities, there is no such item in the assets and liabilities in the balance sheet. But there is a tax base for such item. We will discuss about this concept separately. But first think about whenever in your step one, where we have taken carrying value of assets and liabilities, tax base is the corresponding value of assets and liabilities has to be identified in step two. How do I determine tax base of assets and tax base of liabilities? First tax will start with tax base of an asset. A tax base of an asset is an amount which is deducted for tax purposes against taxable economic benefits arising from the recovery of carrying value of the asset. I'll repeat, I said an amount that will be deducted for tax purposes against taxable economic benefits arising from the recovery of carrying value of asset. What does this mean? Let's say, put it like this. If for suppose, I have an inventory which is valued at 2 lakhs at cost in my books of accounts. How do I recover the value from inventory? By sale of inventory. I sold the inventory at 2 lakh 50 thousand rupees. What is the amount of economic benefit derived from sale? 2 lakh 50. What is the amount of tax which I have to pay on that? 2 lakh 50 minus 2 lakhs. So therefore 2 lakhs is reduced from the value of 2 lakh 50. That 2 lakhs is called as tax base. The amount that will be deducted for tax purposes against taxable economic benefits arising from the recovery of carrying value of an asset. Clear? So I'm saying the amount that can be deducted for tax purposes against the taxable economic benefits arising from the recovery of carrying value of the asset is called as a tax base of an asset. Now my question is, economic benefits arising from carrying value of an asset, from recovery of carrying value of the asset, is it always taxable? Let's say I have a debtor. Amount collected from a debtor, economic benefits arising from the recovery of a debtor, is it taxable? No. I have an advance advances given to uh, my uh, let's say my employee the employee has repaid the advance which i gave the repaid advance does it become a taxable economic benefit no it is just an economic benefit which is not subjected to tax so whenever i'm i have a cash at bank it is recovered in the by withdrawal from bank i withdrew from bank does it become taxable in my hands no so not all economic benefits arising from recovery of carrying value are taxable. If economic benefits derived from the carrying value of an asset are not taxable, then your tax base is equal to carrying value. Then your tax base and your carrying value are same. If your tax base and carrying value are same, then the temporary differences identified in step three are zero. Then zero. So data, bill received, cash in hand, cash at bank, advances, all these tax bases are equal to carrying value. My step three temporary differences are zero in this case. What is the tax base of an asset? The amount that shall be deducted, that shall be deducted for tax purposes against the taxable economic benefits arising from the recovery of carrying value of an asset. Therefore, if I am saying that the tax, the economic benefits derived from, a, from the carrying value of an asset are not taxable, tax base should be considered as equal to the carrying value of the asset. 
have given the example of finished goods cost is 75000 on sale you will recover 1 lakh which is taxable economic benefits derived from recovery of carrying value of this this taxable income is equal to 1 lakh economic benefit derived from sale of asset minus 75000 which is cost of the asset so 75000 is deducted for tax purposes which should be considered as tax base of an asset clear how do i determine tax base of a liability a tax base of a liability is equal to carrying value of the liability minus amount deductible for tax purposes in future i'm saying carrying value of the liability minus amount deductible for tax purposes in future let's say provision for bonus to employee that provision for bonus to employee let's say is unpaid on the date of filing your uh, income tax return upon last date of filing your income tax return the amount of bonus is still unpaid therefore the amount cannot be allowed as deduction in the current year but is eligible for deduction in the subsequent year in such case carrying value of liability minus the amount deductible for tax purposes in future is the entire amount of bonus which when paid will be allowed as deduction therefore the tax base of such liability is considered as zero if it is not paid within the due date of filing the return what if the amount is already paid off before the filing of income tax return due date of filing your income tax return the amount of bonus has been paid what is the amount deductible in future in future nothing is allowed as deduction because the entire deduction is allowed in the current reporting period itself in such case carrying value of bonus minus zero therefore tax base of liability is equal to carrying value of the liability Remember, if settlement of a liability is not deductible for tax purposes, paying a liability is not deductible for tax purposes, creditors, loans, bills payable, bank overdraft, if I repay loan, no tax deduction, if I pay my creditor, no tax deduction, if I pay my outstanding expenses, no tax deduction, in such cases, tax base is equal to carrying value of liability. That means your temporary differences will become zero whenever settlement of a liability is not deductible for tax purposes in future. Look at the example of bonus which I have given you. Subjected to 43B of Income Tax Act. If it is paid within due date of filing your income tax return, then your tax base is equal to carrying value. Temporary difference is zero. If it is not paid within the due date, then the tax base is equal to zero. Therefore, it results in a temporary difference. Tax base of items where there is no carrying value. I'll give you an example. I'll tell you. Let's say I have preliminary expenses. According to your Income Tax Act, your preliminary expenses are allocated to PL over five years period. But according to your accounting uh, uh, knowledge, you can you can uh, uh, eliminate the preliminary expenses against securities premium if I will. So let's say they were adjusted against securities premium for your accounting purposes. There is no carrying value of preliminary expenses existing in the balance sheet anymore. But is there a tax base? Yes, because this amount will give a tax deduction in future or reduces the tax liability in future. Therefore, there is a tax base for that item. Certain items are charged off to PNL or adjusted to reserves of accounting purposes as against for tax purposes they are deferred and amortized in such cases where you have a tax base you have to determine the tax base even though there is no carrying value of the item so carrying value is zero but a tax base should be identified it results in temporary difference as per step three preliminary expenses i have given you the example accounting treatment charge it off to pnl or adjusted against free reserves or securities premium but for tax treatment it should be deferred and amortized over five years period so therefore in certain cases you will find that the items have no carrying value but they do have a tax base circumstances where a tax base cannot be measured reliably sometimes a land and building can have economic benefits derived from the use of the asset or can be derived from the sale of the asset or can be derived from rent of the premises if I am deriving rental income 
then income is chargeable under the head of house property. If I am deriving income by use of the asset, then I will deduct amount in the form of depreciation. If I am selling the asset, then A, it should be under capital gains. Now, how should I determine a tax base when the asset by itself can be used for multiple purposes? In such cases, the tax base should be based on the entity's expectation of recovery of economic benefits from the asset or from the settlement of liability. How do you expect to recover the benefit from the asset? I expect to recover the benefit from the asset from the sale of the asset. Then tax base should be computed based on what would be the tax deductible amount when they sell the asset. Let's say I expect to derive income from the asset from use of the asset. In such cases, the tax base should be based on the WDV or written down value as per income tax purpose. So this way it should be the tax base on such items should be computed based on the entity's expectation to derive benefits from the use of the particular asset. So this is the second step that we have covered. The second step is regarding computation of tax base. What is the tax base of an asset? Amount deductible for tax purposes against the taxable economic benefit arising from the recovery of the carrying value of the asset. Tax base of a liability is equal to carrying value then minus amount deductible for tax purposes in future. Sometimes there might not be a carrying value but we still have to determine the tax base of an asset. Sometimes you may not be able to identify the tax base because the, the asset can be deriving income in multiple ways. You can derive income from a property from rent, from sale or from use. In such cases tax base should be measured based on or should be identified based on the expected use of the enterprise. Clear? These are the four parts that we have discussed. Tax base of an asset, tax base of a liability, tax base where there is no carrying value, circumstances where tax base cannot be reliably measured. And that will bring us to the end of discussion on step 2. What is your step 1? Carrying value. Step 2, computation of tax base. Once we got these two steps, we in Excel sheet, Think about an Excel, carrying values were placed, beside the tax base is identified in place. Third step is identifying or determining temporary differences. How do you determine temporary differences? Carrying value minus tax base. Yes guys, so now let's look at step 3 then. Step 3 is about determining temporary differences by comparing your step 1 and step 2. So, what is a temporary difference and how is it different from timing difference? Temporary difference computation is very simple. Compare step 1 and step 2, you will get temporary differences. Step 1 minus step 2. Temporary differences are different from timing differences which are mentioned under AS12, sorry AS22. Oh, India's 20, India's 12 only talks about temporary differences. 
temporary difference includes timing difference. What is the timing difference? Let me tell you. A bonus to employees, which is created as a provision, if it is unpaid until the date of due date of filing your income tax return, it is eligible for deduction in the subsequent year. For your accounting purposes, I have already given a provision in the PNL. So my accounting income is already low in the current year, but my taxable income is high because the deduction is not allowed in the current year. This difference which arises due to accounting income and uh, in the accounting income and taxable income due to provision of bonus will be allowed as deduction for tax purposes in subsequent year when the amount is paid. So what will happen in the next year when the provision of bonus is paid then automatically my tax in taxable income will reduce in the next year. But my accounting income again I don't allow provision for bonus because that provision of bonus has already been provided in the previous year. So in the next year the accounting income will be higher taxable income will be lower. So therefore in such cases where you come across you will understand that a difference between accounting income and taxable income which arised in the current year will reverse in the subsequent year. Such cases you call them as timing differences. Depreciation classic example of timing difference because depreciation should be calculated to the extent of the carrying value of this. Now your rate of depreciation might be different for accounting purposes might be different for tax purposes because tax purposes it is block of assets basis we have a particular percentage but as far as accounting purposes concerned schedule 2 depreciation gives you useful life and residual value. So the depreciation as per tax purposes is different and accounting purposes is different but ultimately how can how much can you depreciate maximum my depreciation will be to the extent of the you the value of the asset therefore such kind of difference in depreciation is a timing difference which can either increase the accounting income or taxable income in one year but compensate it in the subsequent years. Clear? But I am saying temporary differences can also be there uh, can also be include other than timing differences as well. What are these? Let's say there is a revaluation of an asset. There is an upward revaluation of asset. What happened due to upward revaluation? The carrying value of asset according to your accounting records has increased. When your value of the asset in accounting records has increased, subsequent depreciation is also higher. But such revaluation is not allowed for tax purposes. So tax will still be uh, providing the same amount of depreciation as it was providing earlier. Therefore, it can result in a difference as far as your uh, revaluate, re revalued portion of asset is concerned. It can result in a difference between the carrying value and the tax base which is not a timing difference because it did not appear in one year and did not disappear in the subsequent year. Clear? These are called as temporary differences other than timing differences. Sometimes under a business combination under India's 103 assets and liabilities from the transferor company will be acquired at fair value. But however for tax purposes these assets and liabilities should still be considered at carrying values as it was in the books of transferor. Therefore, in such cases also there can be a difference which arises between a tax base and a carrying value. So these are not timing differences but these are temporary differences. So the meaning here what I wanted to convey was temporary differences include timing differences but are a much more larger ambit than just the timing differences. It could emerge also due to revaluation or business combination giving rise to a temporary difference instead of a timing difference only. Clear? Now let's go to step 4 where I classify my temporary differences. I classify temporary differences into two types. Taxable temporary difference, deductible temporary difference. What is a taxable temporary difference? A taxable temporary difference results in a taxable amount in determination or uh, uh, in increase in the taxable amount in determination of tax payable. It results in higher tax payable in the current in the future period. Deductible temporary differences means they result in reduction. They result in reduction of tax payable in future periods. Taxable temporary differences gives rise to an extra obligation of tax payment in future. Deductible temporary differences 
give a tax saving in future. Taxable temporary differences which result in higher tax payable in future will give rise to a deferred tax liability. Why liability? Because it is increasing my tax liability in future. Deductible temporary differences, they reduce tax liability. They save tax liability in future. They create a benefit to the organization in future. Since they are creating a benefit of tax saving to the organization in future, it results in a deferred tax asset. Clear? Remember, whenever I am talking about an asset, an asset whose carrying value is less than the tax base, an asset whose carrying value is less than tax base. What is tax base? Amount deductible for tax purposes against taxable economic benefits arising from the recovery of carrying value of this. So if the amount deductible for tax purposes is more than the carrying value, then you will get a tax saving in future. Since there is a tax saving in future, then these are called as deductible temporary differences. These are called as deductible temporary differences. Guys, reverse I have written. Reverse I have written. Asset, if it is tax base is more, then it is deductible. Liability, if your tax base is more, it is taxable. Exact reverse I have written. Please make sure that you correct it. Make sure that you correct it. If your tax base is greater for an asset than its carrying value, it results in a greater deduction in future. If, they, if it gives a greater deduction in future, then it is a reduced tax, uh, tax payable in future or a tax saving in future. Since it is a tax saving in future, it is a deductible temporary difference. For a liability, it results in a taxable temporary difference. Clear? Exact vice versa. If your tax base is less for an asset compared to its carrying value, that means the amount deductible for tax purpose is less. If amount deductible for tax purpose is less, it results in higher tax liability in future. When it results in higher tax liability in future, then it should be a taxable temporary difference. Exact reverse even here. It should be a taxable temporary difference for an asset and deductible temporary difference for a liability. If your carrying value is exactly equal to your tax base, there is no temporary difference. There is no deductible or taxable temporary differences which arise. Clear? How do I measure deferred tax? Deferred tax should be measured as your tax rate multiplied by temporary differences which we measured in step 3. Step 3 temporary differences are nothing but carrying value minus tax base. This carrying value minus tax base called as temporary difference. If I multiply it with the tax rate, it gives me a measurement of deferred tax. What is tax rate? Determination of tax rate for computation of deferred tax. It is a real, reliable estimate. What is a deferred tax? Future tax consequence. For what is the tax rate applicable for measuring deferred tax? Since it is a future tax consequence, it should be a future tax rate. I don't know future tax rate, sir. How do I know? Am I predicting what is a future tax rate? Can I read what is going through the finance manager's mind? Not possible. That's why he says it should be a reliable estimate of future tax rate in the year in which these temporary differences are expected to reverse. The year in which I expect these temporary differences to reverse. Let's say there's a scientific research expenditure, an asset which was acquired. According to the useful life, it has a 10 years useful life, 10 years depreciation I will charge. Tax purposes, 100% is allowed as deduction in the same year. So it results in a temp uh, temporary difference. And such temporary difference will reverse over 10 years period. At the end of the 10th year, what is the tax rate? I don't know. I cannot determine. Reliable estimate of future tax rate I cannot make. Then what is the tax rate I should take? Since the future tax rate cannot be determined with reasonable certainty, use tax rates which are enacted or substantively enacted on balance sheet date. The same rate which I applied for current tax in measuring current tax, the same rate I will apply even for measurement of deferred tax. Sometimes there could appear a situation where slab rate of tax exists. We don't have slab rate of tax because we are talking about companies. But if there is a slab rate of tax which exists, that means for an individual when the India is becomes applicable, as on today's date it is still not applicable. But if it becomes applicable, 
if there is a slab rate of tax then i will use the formula of average rate of tax to determine the tax rate as per step 6 what is average rate of tax average rate of tax is equal to total estimated tax divided by total estimated taxable income into 100 that is called as average rate of tax recognition of deferred tax guys taxable temporary differences should be recognized as deferred tax liability deductible temporary differences should be recognized as deferred tax asset taxable temporary differences recognized as deferred tax liability have no restriction as per the standard there is no restriction but for deductible temporary differences which are recognized as deferred tax asset i should test for prudence what is this test for prudence why should i restrict the recognition of deferred tax asset why such similar restriction is not allowed for deferred tax liability this deferred tax liability means you are debiting the pnl when you debit a pnl there is no restriction you can debit the pnl as and when you want you can create a provision whenever you want but when i credit the pnl conservatism concept will come off in picture because it is an income future income future deduction of tax liability future reduction of tax liability today is called as deferred tax asset future reduction of tax liability who told you tomorrow that i'll have a tax liability first of all what if future tax liability was zero from where will you get the deduction of tax liability or reduction of tax liability from where did you get a deductible temporary difference why will i get a gain how can it benefit the organization tax liability itself is zero what reduction what furthermore reduction is possible so that's why we say always test for prudence for us to recognize a deferred tax asset we have to test for prudence but there is no such test for deferred tax liability you can happily recognize deferred tax liability for every taxable temporary difference when it comes to deductible temporary differences i'll have to apply this check for prudence and i'll have to estimate or i have to check whether it is passing the test of prudence before i recognize a deferred tax asset what is this check for prudence check for prudence in recognition of deferred tax asset means i will recognize a deferred tax asset only if there is a possibility of future taxable income against which these deductible temporary differences can be adjusted or realized that means what i should be certain that tomorrow i will have future tax liability against the tax liability i will reduce this deferred tax asset but i will have sufficient taxable income in future against which your deductible temporary differences can be adjusted or realized remember guys carried forward business loss unabsorbed depreciation what do these two have significance they will reduce future tax liability whenever i have a tax liability in future these carried forward business losses and unabsorbed depreciation can be adjusted therefore it will reduce my tax liability in future since it is reducing tax liability in future it should be recognized as deferred tax asset but but what is your check for prudence saying you should have a cert reasonable certainty that the enterprise will make sufficient taxable profit in future guys remember why do you get carried forward business loss or unabsorbed depreciation carried forward business loss that means the entity made loss unabsorbed depreciation your profit is not even sufficient to absorb the depreciation man that's why you got unabsorbed depreciation now how will you establish reasonable certainty of future profits reasonable certainty of future profits is not possible therefore it is very difficult for us to measure a deferred tax asset in case of carried forward business losses and unabsorbed depreciation sometimes you do measure take a look at current covid situation covid situation has significantly affected my operations for the financial year 2020-21 as a result of which in 2020-21 i have a business loss as per your income tax this business loss can be carried forward for eight more years i am assessing whether i can recognize a deferred tax asset or no and now i realize at 
over the past so many years, I have been always reporting taxable profit. Current year, my tax loss is only due to Corona crisis. Had this Corona situation had not been there, I wouldn't have made this loss. Therefore, since vaccinations are already in progress, 2021-22, I expect to make future taxable gain. Reasonable certainty is there? Yes, because all my past years I have been making profit only one year loss. So it is reasonably certain that I will reverse and I will start getting your taxable pro taxable gains or taxable income in future against which this carried forward business loss can be adjusted. In such cases, you can recognize a deferred tax asset. Let's say full past profits are loss, 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 carried forward business loss today. Can I recognize deferred tax asset? Not possible because there is no reasonable certainty that I will make a future gain that I will have a sufficient taxable profits in future. Since you cannot have a reasonable certainty of sufficient taxable profit in future, you cannot recognize a deferred tax asset for such kind of deductible temporary differences. So no deferred tax asset should generally be recognized for unabsorbed depreciation and carried forward business loss. But that one example which I gave you, all year profit, current year loss due to COVID, no problem, you can still recognize a deferred tax asset if you can establish a check for prudence. That means you can prove that there will be sufficient taxable profits in future against which the amount of deferred tax can be adjusted. Clear? Your presentation of deferred tax is exactly the same as presentation of current tax. There is no difference. In p and I will present deferred tax to, for the items which are presented either to the debit or credit of p and For the items which are not recognized in p and but are recognized in OCI or in statement of changes in equity, I'll present deferred tax individually for each item in OCI and statement of changes in equity. In balance sheet, these should be presented as either uh, should be either presented under current or non-current depending on when they are expected to reverse. If they are expected to reverse in next 12 months, I'll classify them as current. If they are expected to reverse beyond 12 months, I'll classify them as non-current. Clear? But remember, they should only be classified as non-financial. They are not financial in nature. Just like your current tax, even your deferred tax also is non-financial in nature. Let's come across some typical situations. Share-based payment to employees. India's 102 applies. According to your India's 102, expenditure on share-based payments should be recognized over the period of vesting on a straight line basis. On a straight line basis, I will recognize in the PNL over the period of vesting. But according to your tax purposes in measurement of taxable income, it is only allowed as deduction when the option is exercised by the employee. Therefore, 100% there is a timing difference which arises. You are creating a provision in accounting records. You are not creating the provision in tax records. Therefore, how, how do I calculate tax base? Carrying value of the liability minus amount deductible for tax purpose in future. Carrying value of liability I can calculate because carrying value of liability is the value which is already existing in my books to the extent of the provision which I already created. What is the amount deductible for tax purpose? The amount deductible for tax purpose should be computed based on the estimated number of employees who are expected to exercise. So therefore tax base should be measured based on market price per share on each reporting date market price per share on each reporting date. So let's say I have 100 employees. Uh, the market the market price is 100. They can exercise it at 60. Fair value is 40. Two years vesting period. So every year 20, 100 employees. So 2000, 2000 first year, 2000 second year, I debit. But let's say when I'm talking about tax base, it is carrying value of the liability minus amount deductible for tax purpose in future. What is the amount deductible for tax purpose in future? To the extent it will be, to the extent the options will be exercised by the employee. 
I am expecting 80 employees to exercise the option and the current market price on today's date is 98. So basically 60 minus 98 is 38 rupees. I will recognize that difference as a tax base. This is regarding share based payments of employees where a typical situation emerges. What is this concept of carrying backward of losses? Have you ever come across this concept of carrying backward of losses? In India, this is not there. But let's say carrying backward of losses is a simple situation like this. I had taxable income in current year. I paid tax. Future period when I make a loss, I can claim a refund of the tax paid for the previous years. India not available. But outside India, there are certain countries where carrying backward of losses is applicable. Therefore, in such cases, I can recognize a deferred tax asset if the enterprise has paid a tax liability in the current year, provided there is a reasonable certainty to believe that the enterprise will incur tax loss in future. Yeah. So whenever there is a carrying backward of losses, I can recognize a deferred tax asset if I have paid tax in the current period, but I am expecting to have a tax loss in the future periods. In such cases, I can recognize deferred tax asset. India, not applicable. Not applicable. Withholding tax on dividends or corporate dividend tax, which recently got abolished. These cases, always remember, CDT should be always an adjustment in your statement of changes in equity. You don't recognize provision proposed dividend as a liability. Therefore, never recognize CDT also as a liability. CDT will directly be recognized as an adjustment from other equity. It will only be recognized when a valid resolution is passed in the AGM and even if the valid resolution is passed, will never appear in the p &L. It should only be adjusted within equity. What is this indexation benefit on asset? Remember, whenever I have a fixed asset, let's say a land or a building, as years pass by from the date of acquisition, if it is not a depreciable asset, I am restricting myself to land, let's say. If it is a depreciable asset, it will be a different logic, guys. Let's take land. Carrying value of the land is a particular cost. There is no revaluation which is done. As years progress by, the amount deductible for tax purposes in future. What is the amount deductible for tax purposes in future? Upon sale, I will have an increased cost or indexed cost which is adjusted. Therefore, if you take a logic like this, let's say the carrying value is 100. Indexed cost is 200. Then in such cases, it results in a deductible temporary difference. What is the deductible temporary difference? The amount adjusted for tax purposes in future. Guys, I'm sorry guys, I should have actually reduced the index cost. Deductible temporary differences are 100. 120, 140, 154, 164, 172 and 180. Therefore, in this case, what is happening? I have an indexed cost. I will have to recognize a deferred tax asset. Why deferred tax asset? Because your tax base is nothing but the indexed cost. Your carrying value is the same throughout. Your tax base keeps on increasing. So there is a temporary deductible temporary differences which will emerge because of that. So to that extent, deferred tax asset can be recognized. It can be recognized only if I expect that the land will be sold in near future. Let's say the land is being used as my factory premises. I have been, I have established the factory shed on the top of it and I have been utilizing that land. Is it probable to generate economic benefits by sale of the land? No, going concern. I don't expect that land to be sold. Therefore, in such cases, I should not recognize a deferred tax asset. Or look at what he's saying. Recognize deferred tax asset to the extent of indexation benefit available on certain assets. If the enterprise intends to generate future tax benefits from sale of the asset rather than from continuing use. So I will recognize deferred tax asset to the indexation benefit only if I expect to recover the carrying value of the asset from sale rather than from continuing use. If the enterprise intends to generate taxable economic benefits 
from continuing use of the asset rather than from sale of the asset, then the enterprise should not recognize deferred tax asset even though indexation benefit is available. Guys, deductible temporary differences should be a, a difference of indexed cost and carrying value. Carrying value and index cost is the tax base. That's it guys. With that, we come to the end of discussion on this concept of India's 12th.